And I just realized, let's try that again. Welcome everybody to the live stream. I had my microphone muted, so I am so glad to have you all joining me. Uh, we're getting back into the swing of things. I am still a little rusty from about two and a half months off live streaming, but we are getting back into the into the swing, like I said, in a new setting, um, getting things kind of rearranged. And even this week, I have some additional, uh, another camera coming and some things uh, to set up for the live stream. So glad you joined me. Hey there. Thanks so much, Lola. Glad to have you back on the live stream. Um, and uh, yes, feel free to to chime in in the comments. I always enjoy hanging out with y'all for uh, the time that we have. Uh, this is an open house style live stream, so you just pop in, pop out whenever you'd like, see what we're doing. And uh, this is my learn to paint process. If you are new to the channel or new to the live stream, I am live streaming my learning to paint journey right here in public and this evening is going to be no exception. I am going to be attempting a painting that I am a little nervous, not really nervous about, but that I really don't know how it's going to turn out. I don't know really what I'm going to do. So uh, we will find out together. And it's always a learning experience and always a lot of fun. So I will bring you along for the journey. So glad to have you joining. We will continue to give people a few minutes to pop in. There are a few of us a few of you on the live stream, but there are always more people that pop in as they see the notification. And um, I'm trying to determine over the quarantine and the things that have been that have happened the last year, I am less and less engaged myself on social media, which is healthy for me. But um, obviously, I have to be able to let you all know that these things are happening. So I have to stay somewhat engaged but I don't play to the algorithm. So that kind of also impacts what I'm doing. So I'm thinking about other ways that I can connect um, more efficiently. So I have not been uh, as active on social media. All that to say, I'm giving some thought to some other ways that I can do this efficiently, but still keep you all in the loop. Those of you who want to be in the loop when I'm live streaming. So the plan is now that I've moved and I'm getting settled, um, one of my main intentions with the move was to have more time to paint, which I am really working actively to do. I'm trying to paint every day, um, at least a little bit. Um, and so that's part of the plan. And so in kind of alignment with that, my goal is to also be able to do more live streams. So I hope to do some daytime live streams and some evening live, live streams. And I'm not sure which, if I'll have like standard days that I kind of fall into, um, right now, is, as I'm getting settled in a new place, it's it's working to do kind of as I'm able. So um, it's a little less formal or a little less uh, standardized as opposed to previously when it was every Saturday night. But I'll try to get more um, routine built in. Um, but yeah, that's what's for now. So welcome, welcome again. So glad to have you all on the live stream. Hey there, mom and dad. So glad to have you. Um, wanted to show you all what we did last time. Um, if you were on the live stream or if you saw on Instagram, you may have seen this. I don't know if the camera will focus on this painting that we worked on. We got the major block ins um, at the last live stream, and then I did this additional work. She still needs some work. Um, maybe that's better lighting. I do have a light coming, so that should help us with the lighting up here. My lighting is good from some angles and bad from other angles. But um, anyway, this lioness painting is coming along. I, I want to now go in and put in some brighter highlights and really raise the um, intensity or the saturation of the yellows and browns so that it's a little more striking. But the, the major uh, framework is good and I just need to finish this up. So I wanted to show you all that. We will not be doing this on the live stream since we did it last time, but I'm gonna continue working on that so you can follow on Instagram to see the final product once this is done. 
um, but I always post kind of um, process pictures on Instagram. So that's what we'll be working on from the previous live stream. All right. Hey there, Henry. So glad to have you. Thanks for popping in and saying hello. Yogesh, no problem. So glad you popped in. Um, I'm going to be doing more of these, so you or the kids can pop in whenever you are able to. All right, let's get started this evening. What we're going to do is we are going to work on this little guy. Let me put him up here. Let me put the... Oh, I wanted to talk, I'm going to be starting with a, um, a canvas, uh, a canvas board that is, uh, toned and I wanted to talk a little bit about when and why I tone my canvases. Um, I do this sometimes, sometimes I don't, that's just basically I take some, in this case, it was like some, um, basic brown, like a raw sienna or a burnt umber and you just tone the canvas. One of the reasons I do this is because at this point I'm using relatively cheap canvases um, or, or canvas boards. Um, and so that helps in covering the canvas at least one swipe through. Um, there you can still see that there is some canvas showing through, but that helps. Um, that's not the main reason that most artists do it, I think. Um, by toning the canvas, it helps your eye actually to see the colors more accurately or better. Um, and so that kind of helps. Now in this lighting, it's probably not a huge benefit um, because I don't have the greatest lighting. Hopefully when I get this new, I'm gonna have a clamp on light that I'll be able to put on the easel that will be direct um, on the art. And so will be a little bit easier. But um, just wanted to kind of talk about why I do this and why I did it in this case. Because this painting that we're about to do, whoops, I guess I should come over here, is relatively monochrome, um, or I guess two-tone. Um, it's basically white and basically black. Um, I think that's going to be one of the challenges for this painting. So we will see how it goes. But I'm going to start with a little, I'm doing a smaller canvas board, and we are going to do it um and and we toned it so let me actually switch the easel around for you all or not the easel the camera the tripod is what i was thinking and i will adjust this a little bit whoops so that it is a little more close sorry about the kind of wobbly part of this okay we will get it adjusted i want to put you all as close as possible so that you can see kind of what i am doing Okay. I think that's going to be pretty good. So let's see here. Like we did um, as my last um, painting or last live stream, I talked about one of the things that I'm really focused on is learning to um, or practice and improve my drawing. And so in order to do that, I am not on these paintings, at least, excuse me, these paintings, I am not putting, um, I'm not doing a, a sketch or a drawing ahead of time. But I do want to improve my ability of the drawing meaning when i paint on the canvas kind of freehand and so what i want to do in this case is 
I want to start laying in the darkest tones I have. So if I lay in the darkest tones, then that's going to help me get my values correct, hopefully, as I go. So let's do the darkest tones we can. Hi there, and I. So we'll mix, and I'm actually, I can hold this up. I'm taking brown, blue, and white, and I'm just mixing the brown and blue right now to make an almost black, because in nature there is no real black, other than I suppose if you're in the bottom of a cave where there's no light at all, or no nothing for the light to reflect off, then you get black. But in this case, we don't. So I want to mix a very dark color and come in here and start laying in kind of the basic framework. Hi there, Bob. Thanks for popping in. Hope you had a great day trying to stay cool. I'm doing the same. It's probably about 90 degrees in my attic, which is where I am right now. So I have fans a blazing. And uh, we are getting a relatively, well, it's seasonal heat, but relatively abnormal heat wave where it's getting really warm here, but this is tough because my paint is drying about as fast as I can mix it. So we're just going to try to do the best we can. Okay. So his. Oh. Just trying to get right now just some rough ideas just to kind of block in a little bit. Remember the painting process. Ooh, I got white. I don't want any white. The painting process is really about putting something on the canvas and then making adjustments as you go. So it's really about let's get something on there, let's get some basic composition on there and then see you know what isn't working I'm just taking a little bit of the white into this kind of black that I already mixed or the dark color that's why it has kind of a blue tinge what what this will do for us is it will obviously the value is lighter so it doesn't look white obviously but eventually it will 
we can add highlights to it then and low lights that will look more natural. At least that's the intention. So right now we're just quickly covering canvas space to get kind of our can't remember what this animal's called. Is he a lemur? Does somebody know? I think it's a lemur. But maybe not. I know it's not one we see often here, at least in this part of the States. What we'll do is then we'll do a little darker gray. funny because when I first started painting, when I, I, some of you may remember, one of my biggest challenges was mixing colors. And it still is always a challenge, I think. But I used so much black when I first started. I used a lot of black. And as my skill has grown, like I have black, but I rarely use it because I'm just always mixing blue and brown to kind of make that grayish black. Okay, as this goes off the canvas, I want it to be more shadow, so the white will look more gray. So that's why I'm changing the value, the tone value slightly this way when I go. The brightest value will be kind of up there and maybe a little bit here. Okay, well we have basic coverage of the canvas. So let's, what we do then, what I want to do is step back and look at the canvas a little bit and say, okay, what's working, what isn't working, and what can we change? So. Roughly, I think the composition is okay. What isn't working for me is, like I wanna make sure that it is clear that he's looking upward. And so, that 
That's one thing. Now, part a lot of that is going to be how we put the pupils in of the eyes, but it's going to be how the nose reads, how his, uh, yeah, all of that. So, um, I want to put a rough idea, kind of. Ooh, that's really big, but that kind of gives us the idea to play with as we get going. Then we got basic eye spots. And Let's see if we can come in and do some more, a little more refining. Okay. Coming in just where I see shadow kind of on his face. The lighter areas on his face, so the tip of his nose is light. And then he has this part that comes down there. He has some fur, comes down the side of his face like that. Hey there, Betsy. Thanks. Thanks for popping in. Hope you all are doing well. I saw that you had really cool temperatures this morning, and I was jealous. We're struggling a little bit out here. But I guess you guys got it a month or so ago, so we can't complain too much. There's something around his crest of his face. Okay. 
I do think it's a species of lemur. Most lemurs have white faces with dark blackish rings around their eyes. However, there are different species. Whoops. Mostly Madagascar. Um, they're very different markings from each other. Cool, Henry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, Lola, that sounds terrible. Yeah, it was about the same here. Um, and we don't have air conditioning, most of us. So we're struggling. I do have a small window air conditioner that my father loaned me, which is lifesaver for this next couple of days. But uh, yeah, we're, we're really struggling. Ooh, that's way too light, but it will. Will it will work itself out? All of this underpainting and the the layers I'm doing on top of this will give us a variation naturally in his fur, which will be really valuable when it comes to how this reads in the final painting. So we'll we'll see some of these gray and dark shadow spots will shine through, which will make it, because if we just painted, if I just took pure titanium white and put it everywhere, it wouldn't read correctly. It would look really, really odd. So this isn't a bad thing. As we adjust these values, I go in and will brighten up things around so that it all works together. Okay. I think we have the rough kind of idea that works, basically. So I'm not, I'm pretty happy with that for the first run through. Um, this is where we just start to kind of really make some some decisions about composition and color, etc. notice in the reference photo the top of his fur actually looks kind of brown and so I'm bringing those tones in also around his eyes and all of a sudden he looks a little more three-dimensional there's some light there reflecting off the side of his snout. So there. I guess this is a little more. Now what I want to do before we get for a couple of hours to feel like 
temperature was 106. Ugh. Yeah. That's when, once it gets so humid that the water just has to fall out of the sky. You get really appreciative for that tipping point. That is part of summer in Little Rock that I am not missing right now, Bob G. Although, talk to me in November, or even September, October, and I'll <laughs> be ready to uh, take a sabbatical from South Dakota weather, probably. Okay, now what I want to do is, before I do any more work on the lemur, I want to do some work in the on the background so I am gonna kind of use the reference photo as reference a little bit but I want the kind of green color to be pretty dark. Especially up in this corner. So we're going to kind of come in and start putting this background around him. I like the vibrant green kind of behind him, but we'll see how it all plays out. For now, we'll just kind of put it in. Just put some darker color up a, up here because we really want the eye drawn right into his face. I think that green is a valuable tone behind him because it gives really high contrast to his fur, but I don't want it to become distracting. So we'll put this in, and that'll give us an idea if this is actually going to work as a final painting, which I don't see anything that suggests it won't. Get some coverage. You can see the canvas is doesn't uh, isn't covering the whole way, but it's it's getting there. So it will then we'll come and do a second coat over this. Make it look a little better. Okay, for now that works. We have basically our basic painting. Okay, um, Lola, what brush are you using? Great question. Let me show you what I am doing, which I should say, I say often, but this is just basically a about probably three quarter inch filbert brush. It's fairly, for the size of the painting, because this is like a 
probably eight by ten. It's a fairly large brush. Um, I'm trying to see if it says for sure. A number ten filbert. Number ten filbert. So um, that is what I'm using. The reason I'm using a brush this big for a lot of this blocking in work is because I want to force myself to use, um, I feel weird not talking to you all, so. so I, when I use a bigger brush like this for the blocking in, um, it forces me not to dive into the detail too quick. You saw that I started to add some detail, um, but I want to force my brain to see the variations of the, the, the color values as opposed to drawing lines um, as I paint. So when I talk about improving my drawing skills, what I'm really talking about is how I place the shapes of whatever makes up this, this um, composition, whatever the particular subject is, I'm looking at shapes and I'm trying to train my brain to look at the shapes of the thing as opposed to, oh, there's his fur, there's his eyes, there's his nose. I'm looking at, okay, there's a little rectangle on the end of his nose. There's a long rectangle down the, the center of his nose. There are rings around his eye. There's obviously circles for his eyes. There's kind of half moons around the crest of his, of his head his, uh, or his eyebrows. There's um, kind of a, um, a banana shape around the sides. And then within those larger shapes, then I start looking at, okay, where, where's the light hitting? Where are there variances? And you just start honing in and getting smaller and smaller and smaller with the shapes that you create. And I believe so far, and what I've learned, that makes really the most efficient and um, most often convincing brush work is looking at the shapes and breaking them down into largest shapes and then a little bit smaller and then a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller and eventually you get to where you're doing single brush strokes. So that's kind of what's going on in my head. Um, that's why I'm using this large one. Now I'm probably to the point where it's about time to start um, maybe a little bit smaller brush. So that's where we're going to go next. Good question. Let me turn you all back to the painting. And okay, this is a good time. I should have been doing this more. But let me really stand back and look at the look at this composition so far. I don't think there's anything that's screaming to me that there is that it's not working. Is there anything you all see that is way off that is that is just not working? Anything that jumps out at you where it's like, whoa, you've made a huge mistake, you need to adjust this thing. All right. Let me see. Hey there, Michael. I hope you are having a good week. I almost said a good weekend, but we just came off the weekend. Um, a good Monday, I guess. Okay. Now, let me think the next steps. What should, what are my next steps? Um... I think I want to do a little bit I think it's really now looking at his like the the values and continuing to refine the values in his face and this is where this kind of painting gets really tricky. It's almost like painting the lion because there's only so many tones in the lion. I mean, it's basically browns and yellows, right? 
and um, this one is basically black and white. I mean, it, we know it's not, but how do we work on this? So let me switch brushes. I think I'm going to go to a... I think I'm actually going to go to a... Well, maybe I'll try one of these new brushes. So I got these new brushes from Rosemary and Company, which is... I really love their brushes. Um, so this is a sort of filbert brush. But, and I don't know if you all can see it. If I get close enough, maybe it'll maybe it will focus. But there are, it's like unevenly cut there. It's not going to focus for me, but maybe if I put something behind it, I don't know. There you can see it a little bit. Um, so I'm going to try this brush. It's still pretty large, but I think it could be really helpful for doing the kind of... T so the brush strokes will look a little more like um, fur. So let me try it. I have not used this brush yet. It's actually this set, uh, like I said, is Rosemary Co., but it's really um, made for doing foliage and plants. But I think it will work for what we're trying to do. So let us try. Now I'm mixing the dark color we had before again. And what I want to do is... look at him and see okay I know there are some okay there's definitely darker spots in here that come around his whoops this is where I'm going to start just with the brush strokes giving that feeling using the brush stroke directions to give the feeling of fur. So that's my hope is that it will read as fur down the road. So let's see. Okay. Yeah, I think this brush is working actually like I had intended. It'll give these little like edges that look like his fur is just jumping out of there. That way we don't get perfect lines between the white and the and the dark. So I'm going to take advantage of this to do some uh,
then when we paint the white over it, we'll look like his, look like her. I'm just doing this along the edges so that it kind of gives us that feeling or that look. And some of these will some of these brush strokes in the end will show through. Not many, but some will. That's a little too bright. I like how that works, but it's a really large brush, so we set that aside, and we need a smaller filter but I don't have it, so I'm going to try to take, I don't really have an in-between brush, but I'm going to take this smaller brush and start to try to do a little more detailed work. But first, I'm going to go in and take Remix that dark black kind of color we had. And do some additional work on his body. 
we don't need a lot of detail on his body, basically. We just need it to blend in. So. Wouldn't it be crazy if we end up painting this whole painting without ever using actual black? I just realized like, oh, I don't know that I'm actually going to ever use the black. And that's really blue. So let's bring in some more brown. You may do an additional coat of that, but for now, that will give us some additional. Hi there, Natasha. Thank you. So good to have you on the live stream. I feel like the old gang is back. All right. I shouldn't say the old gang. The former gang. Our original, the OGs. Notice here, I'm actually putting in, here I'm adjusting this, the values a little bit darker now, and it's actually a brown. But that's actually what his, in the light, that's what his uh, fur looks like. It looks like a brown to me at least. Even though our eye says, oh, he's black and white. Uh, 
thanks. OG all the way. Yeah, we need some sort of like badge or something for those of you that have been here since the beginning so that when new people come in, they know like who's been around for the whole thing. Hey there, thanks Harris. Yes ma'am, that is correct. I am using acrylic paint still. I did know Aviance. I She was one of the young ladies I took a couple of years ago um, to the World Women's Foundation had a conference a summit at the Clinton Center and Aviance, I believe, was one of the students that I did that went with me to that. I believe she's a really kind of phenomenal artist as well. I think I follow her on Instagram. She does a lot of, or seems to, from what I remember, do uh, more some more abstract things, which are really, which is really cool. That's really amazing. Yeah, uh, she graduated, I think, this year, didn't she? That's so wonderful. I'm really appreciative you guys are continuing to push that forward. I know it's a lot of work, and it means a lot because we put so much work into it to get it established. So I'm really glad that really wish I could have stayed more you know, involved, but I'm glad you're continuing to push the alumni initiatives forward. And including more and more, you know, of the new alumni, I think that's just going to be great over time.
That would be amazing, yeah. Tell everybody in the group that I miss them and I really appreciate the work they're doing. Now let's kind of step back again. What's not working? Okay, he's kind of fat faced and flat right now. So, I think one of the things that I need to do. Okay, now I think I take some of this, a smaller brush like I'd intended to before I got sidetracked doing the background and then more of the, um, let's put some of this. And I think we need to start shaping his That's part of the challenge because lemurs have such a kind of very specific head shape or face shape. And so you have to kind of really I think we're starting to get there. Deeper shading on the nose. Yes, you're right. Yes, the 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 value of the like what's happening on the nose needs to come brighter so because in the photo you really see what's happening you know, you can see even though his nose is quote black you really see what's going on so I need to raise that value up significantly so let's look there okay I want to come in a little more. And now, 
give some more let's see this comes right under his little snout there's some lighter parts over here on the bridge of his nose so let's see and Thanks. Yeah, I that's sometimes forget to talk about what my brain is doing, but I want uh, yeah, I want you all to kind of see. Now I'm kind of happy a little bit with what's starting to happen here, but I'm not really happy with still what's happening here. Um, and I think it has to do with the shape. Um, there, so, I don't think it's accurate. So let's see if we can fix that a little bit.
Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I always have to remember that. Okay, what I see when I step back is that this little tuft of fur doesn't come, seems like it doesn't come far enough down, or this jowl kind of isn't, because his head is kind of turned that way. So in order for this to read as three-dimensional, I really need to work a little bit here. And I was going to say this looks a little, but I think it could also be the eye needs to come out a little bit. Because look how close the eye is. I think the eye needs to come out and down a little bit. Because the eyes really need to be like this. like you need to bring the dark down a little under the nose to make room for the, let's see for the mouth and then touch up with the deeper shade yep 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 yes yes okay so let's First, let's go back and see if we can put the eye in the right place. Because I think if we get the eye in the right place, that will help us a little bit with some of the other adjustments. So, let me go in here and... kind of adjust the eye a little bit. So I want the eye kind of down here. I'm just going to paint over it we can still see it's kind of there. We can almost see the socket, but we really, because he's looking up, so we really want that eye, I think, about right there. So let me actually take a little bit. Not the actual eye color, but let me take Oh, this paint is drying way too fast. That's all right. Um, yeah, that's not going to work. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. If you get the eyes even part, sort of right, that can cover a multitude of other sins. And that's probably what I should have started was with face structure. Because if you remember, when I started drawing, I started drawing this and kind of like a box. which is I should have drawn the face lines like where his nose was. Anyway, you live and learn. That's why we're doing this, right? Such a new mistake. No. So, let's see. We kind of...
Okay, let's step back. What do you all think? I absolutely, I kind of think you guys are geniuses. Because just by making that adjustment of his socket, it already feels to me like his head is more correct. Yeah, I think you're right, Natasha. It, uh, you can start to see what is working and what's not. Now I'm looking at the other eye. Huh. And I'm fairly happy with it as far as placement, so I don't want to mess myself up. But I do think we can kind of start adjusting the shape. it looks it looks like we're on the right track but I'm running out of, I almost bought two pallet plates because I'm running out of pallet space because I keep mixing and mixing and remixing and jumping around and the paint dries. But the bad thing about when it dries, there's a small film, but then if you put paint over it and wet it again, then you get chunks of paint in your brush and that's no good for anybody so what I'm trying to do now is put the dark ring around his eye that's there
Oh no, sorry. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I'm being very quiet. I need to. I need to have like music or something in the background, so you know I just did uh, my Wi-Fi didn't conk out or something. You could tell I'm getting really focused and concentrating when I. Uh, I tend to babble when I don't really know what to do next. So, um, so what I was doing there, you can see, I was just trying to establish some of the tonal variances um, in the color on his face so that we get more of his uh, anatomy, the anatomy of the face. Because if I get this right, then once we plug in the actual eyes and a few other details, you won't need a lot and it'll read really well. So that's what I was attempting to do, was get the shapes correct. And then... Yeah, so yes, that's what was going on in my head. Now, what I need to do, though, is mix more. My, uh... Brown and blues. I, I think we are getting there. I'm liking it more and more. So yeah, I think we're not quite there, but I think we're getting there. That's what happened with the lion. I just kept adjusting values, or the lioness. And if you remember several months ago when, probably eight or ten months ago when I, or probably six or eight months ago when I did the male lion that just kind of remember when we were trying to just bring in the shadow I was playing with that and I was like let's just bring the shadow all the way across his face it ended up being a really nice painting um, that was kind of by accident or you know experiment and that's what I was doing with the lioness as well and then once I put the eye color in then all of a sudden or not the eye color I had put in the eye color but then all of a sudden I put in pupils and it was like, whoa, there she is. So, all right, for this, I want to see. Okay, so his nostril is, I think it's about in the right place. I just, it's really, I want that the darkest tone I can. And he has one there. And then there's the dark. It goes between them. And kind of comes out to his mouth there. There's a little bit down here. Okay. I think we're... I think we're getting this. What do you guys think? You don't have any sound. Um, huh. I wish I could. Let me go in.
hold on, y'all. Lola doesn't have sound. Let me see if I can go actually onto YouTube and enter a comment so that uh, you guys may hear me. Let me mute myself. Um, let's see. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And maybe, maybe Lola accidentally muted. Um, okay. Tasha, Natasha, you say you can hear me. Okay. Yeah. My, cause my audio feed is showing that it's going through. So I wonder if Lola just accidentally hit a mute button or if her browser, maybe she can refresh the browser. It's like troubleshooting in real life, real time, y'all. Okay. So, okay. So we have his nostrils. And, yeah, we just need that as dark as possible. Huh. I hope Lola's able to get it figured out. That's frustrating because I can't do anything for her. Ugh. Okay, let me see. Now, let me try to take a, I'm going to take a really fine detail brush, y'all. I'm going to take a really tiny brush and start to see if I can do some of the detail work on his nose. Weird. I closed everything and came back. Still no sound. I'm going to restart my phone. Yeah, maybe, hopefully, if she restarts her phone, it will work. That's so bizarre to me. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to come in and on top of this kind of gray on his nose, I actually want it to be even lighter. But I have to do, I'm not sure if it's going to be too light because I want... On the top of his nose, I want that. And This might be too bright, but you kind of have to experiment. Um,
Weird, weird, weird. That is so strange. Whoops. Okay. Ah, Lola says the nose is looking good. Okay. So let's see if we can. Whoops. There's definitely some. The brightest spots are right here. Okay, let me my audio. Lola, can you hear me now? I changed my audio input. But that's weird. Yeah, it may just be Maybe on her end, not sure. Oops. All right, let's see if we can do This is too much, but we'll come in and blend it later. Whoops. Okay. Let's 
see. We need to come in on the uh, other side of his face, his nose, and do some sculpting here. Okay. Now I need to come back with the blue, bluish color and refresh this. Okay, this is a mess, y'all. Um, it looks okay up close, but then at a distance it looks like a hot mess. <sighs> I think I... lightened his whole snout too much compared to what's around it. Even though it's kind of what I'm seeing in the in the photo. I think we need to Let's see if that helps at all. Nope, this is not working for me.
Hmm. Something's not going right. Huh. Not sure what to do other than kind of redo this a little bit. y'all. I don't think I've ruined it, but okay, let's pause because I don't know what to do there. And let's go to, let me rinse out this brush and let's go to, I guess it's not as bad as I think it is. Like it's not horrible. I just have to figure this out. And it's all the balance of the different color tones and values around his face. But Let's jump back to the, sorry, I'm sniffling so much. Jump back to the eyeball. Or eyeballs. Let's see. Okay, we put this one. I think I like it. And then this one, I think, is a little more muted. more of a greenish color because it's more in the shade. So let's go over here. Let's see if we can do that. Okay. I could stop there and call it a skunk. You are contributing, Bob G. You're here. I appreciate it. Yes, I could just call it a skunk. That's a valid, extremely valid point. I meant to paint a skunk the whole time. Okay, let me see.
switched on one place, I will actually try to use black as the pupil because it's just easier and I'm lazy. So the pupil needs to be I think right there. And the other one needs to be right maybe there. Oops. Let's see if we got those kind of correct. It sort of is working for me. Okay, now what I need to do is go in and put in some reflections. which appear white in the photo, but they're more sort of blue. So I'm going to mix that and try to see if I can do this without messing up the whole eye. Blue-gray. Let's put in some Lighten it up, come over to this eye. And I need almost a, a yellow white. Okay. Step back. Thank you. Isn't that crazy? Just putting that detail around the eye actually made the nose not look so bad. So let's keep working. We are actually about out of time. So we'll start winding this down. There's quite some time still to go. I need to do the background. I need to refine his fur, but I'm starting to be happy with what is slowly coming together. On his face, at least. So, it's going to be a good place to take a breather. Let you all get some rest because it's been two hours but thank you all for coming to 
my show. I always love hanging out with you, and you would not believe how much I missed hanging with you all while I was dealing with my move and the robbery and everything that happened. So um, it really is great to be back with you all. And to be able to hang out. I love, love, love what I'm doing and learning. And it is so much fun to be able to share it all with you each. So, that said, if you are not subscribed, please do so. Please like this video and keep an eye out for the next video or the next uh, live stream because I will be doing that soon. I'm not sure exactly when the next one will be, but it will be pretty quickly here. I have some stuff going on this week, so not sure if I'll be able to get another one in this week or, or this weekend, but I will definitely do my best. So, that said, let's take a pause. We're at 59 minutes, one hour and 59 minutes. So we will take a break and I will say thank you so much. Um, oh, that's bad. I'm backlit. Let's not do that. There we go. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to see you on the next live stream. And before that, you can catch me on uh, Instagram at Stephen E. Rice and follow the progress photos of this painting as well as others that I do throughout the week. And I plan to be much more um, prolific in the next several months to a year really to ramp up my skill as well as just the number of subjects and the types of paintings that I tackle. So I'm looking forward to the journey and I'm looking forward to being with you all on it. And I'll see you on the next live stream. Have a great night, everybody.